is concerning birthday parties. Yes. Many people say that we are not celebrating birthday parties and make the excuse we only invited family members. Is this an, an, estab is this an acceptable practice? Uh, perhaps what she means to say is they do celebrate birthday parties but under the guise of only inviting a limited number of the family members so that escape censure from the Jamaat. But on that particular day they do celebrate. Mm. So she is quite right. Whatever name they give it, it is still a birthday party. A limited one. But if you have to enjoy a birthday party, why not invite others then? <laughs> you see, it, it is not a wise policy for them to, to, to adopt. They have been going out to others who have been inviting them on birthday parties. If such a family does not mind holding birthday parties in their own home, of a, you know, comparatively smaller nature, I mean, more closed nature, then that is the right occasion to go out and uh, return them this kindness which they have extended to you earlier. Invite them. But that's not what I'm advising. What I'm advising is, be honest to yourself. If you have broken the uh, rule or broken the tradition, then don't hide it under false excuses. Mm. Birthday is uh, not prohibited in the sense that uh, it is uh, a clear-cut injunction of the Holy Quran that if you do this, then you will be punished by God or you will receive the wrath of Allah. It belongs to a different area of love. This is a general statement of the Holy Quran, meaning that useless, they don't pursue useless things of life, you know. They don't participate in meaningless activities. So this is useless in the sense that, uh, number one, it is a blind imitation of the Western people or whatever people in the world uh, celebrate these things without uh, uh, reasoning why, why do they do it? Is it good or bad? Or why is, why, how is it justified? So for a Muslim, all the answers lie, answers lie in returning to the source of good conduct that Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and before him other prophets of God. Now we know for certain from all the established authentic history of the of religion, no prophet ever, no prophet of Allah ever celebrated his birthday. No companions of any prophet celebrated the birthday of their founder of that religion. Or if he's not a bringer of a new religion, it's their prophet, their master. And we don't have any evidence from the Bible anywhere that uh, birthday of any Jewish prophets was ever held, nor that of Christ. Now coming to Hazrat Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who were with him, who were trained by him, who knew him better than any following generation, and they loved him much more than anybody else, of the later generations, they never celebrated his birthday either. It was not only Rasulullah himself not doing it, but the, uh, the Khulafa, all the four caliphs, and all the generations of the, uh, of the companions, and the later generation which is called Tabeen, and still later generation which are called Taba Tabeen, and all this, yes. none, none did it. So who is better in birth, <laughs> you know? So it is a negative, it has a negative element in it, as if you are more worthy of this. Mm. So that is why my late father, Hazrat Khalifat al Masihani, was very averse to this. You know, he was religiously against it. Nobody would dream in his days to ha celebrate birth parties, birthday parties, and. Uh, mm, you know, whenever, if anybody did, whenever it came to his notice, he was very angry. 
but uh, didn't take any disciplinary action against him or her because as I have told you it is not a part of the Sharia. No. We infer from these things which I have just told you that uh, we should discourage it and we always discourage it. Right? 